Stretch your wings, Sunan. Something is wrong. Foul. Won't let us lose. Time to die. Off, dude. Take the foe down. 
Help me out here! We have to this box! Mine! Mine! Come, help me with this. Hey, come here! Hey, come here a moment. Hey! Can't do this alone! Lookers and a wig wag.
What are you doing here in the middle of nowhere? Ah, a visitor for Chad the Bewilderer, the most radiant and rakish riddler. Do you have the wits to best me? There is cake in it if you do. For cake? I will answer any mind tease you have for me. My head is forged with the hammer, hurt with sharp tools, smoothed by files. I take in my mouth what is set before me. Iron is forged with tools, and a keyhole could be the mouth of a door. A lock and key? Wonderful. Your wit sparkles. But still, another one. I saw a strange thing, wonderful of shape, singing in a tavern. Its beak underneath stood upon splayed legs that cannot walk. Something that sings. A musical instrument. The bladder that winds and wheezes through pipes. Backpipes. Very good. A tricky one that few but the sharpest needles can sew. Now, the final test. With my roof of tears, I am driven far and wide on my avenging path. When I shake the forest, I rumble the fruit from the trees. Rain covers the earth like a roof. And the rumble of thunder and lightning can shake acorns from a branch. A storm. You are brighter than the sky, Lantern. Your wit outshone my words. And such a feat deserves three cakes. But unfortunately, I do not have any. So the cake was a lie? Do not pout. Have a reward much more worthy of your talents. Goodbye, Chad. Your riddles were a fun diversion. Stay a while, read some more of my scribblings. I might leave this place one day and move to Eskenchester with my riddles. What do you see, Sunan? I should not be seen in this area. in here for you.
Have a look soon. <laughs> huh? Drink by the campfire, skate on the ice, buy a lean horse and a tempered sword. Do these things and be pleased with your lot. Blocked from the other side. Perhaps some pretty flowers will get her to open the door. Now you have lured me in. Explain yourself. It's just been a while since anyone passed this way, and I wanted to be sure you would stay and visit. By pretending to be a pretty young maid. My mother used to tell me stories, legends of a forgotten king, of magic swords rising from misty lake waters. There was often a fair maiden, lonely and locked away. I fell in love with that sweet fantasy. So much more romantic than a pathetic man, whiling away the hours until death. A sad shadow play. So where is your mother now? Dead. These last three years and buried under the flowers she loved. I wanted to move on, but I cannot bear to leave her. Your mother would not want you to be so love-starved. Leave this house of grief. You are right. She was always so happy, laughing and singing. It would break her heart to see me so forlorn. I'll not let sentimentality be the shackles of my soul. I will find work in the village, even meet a girl, and start my own family. And tell them stories of magic heroes and fair maidens. Thank you, stranger. You have given me a glimpse of a sweeter life. This was hers. Take it, for it saddens me to look on.
I hope you find what you're looking for. Farewell. I'm glad you stopped by. It brought me some comfort. Good morrow! Good morrow! I stand here on behalf of the Lady Elette of Colchester, famed mistress of the flight. Do you seek an audience? I have never heard of her. Based on your appearance, I am thoroughly unsurprised. Nevertheless, do you wish to challenge her? I do. Foolish. Yet to be graced by her presence may balance the pain of the loss you will most assuredly suffer. Lady Elette, you are called to the field of flighting. Ah, oh, a peasant. Come for a sound flighting. Please, place your paltry bet. Take this. Hmm. A pittance. But I accept on the lady's behalf. She will begin. I have heard much about you, and none of it good. You've the softness and brains of a sheep. My verses are known all across this great land. For they put all who hear them to sleep. Not bad. Oh, you think you're so clever, I'm almost impressed that you managed to blurt something out. Yet I worry our skills are too deeply mismatched. I'll defeat you and banish all doubt. <laughs> Lucky. I should almost take pity on one so bereft, of beauty, of wit, and of skill. But instead, I'll persist till you beg me to stop. Lend a soul, for your words make me ill. Where did you steal that one from? Thus the Lady Alette has been beaten at last, by the one she was foolish to doubt. Now her herald must give me the sum of my bet, while Alette can but stand there and pout. Oh. Pay what is due and send this peasant away. I grow weary. Of course, milady. Take your winnings, you have earned them. Thank you. Hey, <laughs> 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 
wanted to wear a garland of meadows. <laughs> Show me what lies ahead. How are your people, Rolo? Recovered and ready for what tonight holds? Gerhild's treachery was a blow. Few were surprised it came to that, only that her dark ways took such a brutal turn. Put that aside. We're ready now. What would you have of us? Wait for my signal. When I approach Estrid, that is your time. I am your axe, Eivor. Night will fall soon. Then is our moment to strike. Don't say Did you ever use to sacrifice John Barnacle? So the deceived might fall on the fertile land and grow the grain anew. I don't care for that pagan pump. 
There is just one God now, and he gives us everything we need. In this life and the next. They used to sacrifice John Barleycorn so that his seed might fall on the fertile land and grow the grain in you. I don't care for that pig and pond. There is just one god now, and he gives us everything we need. In this life and the next. Hmm. Sweet old chap, ye shulen bona, wunda, swa slayat, ta ye maro. No one is one. We are not a dollar. We are not a dollar. We are not a dollar. They used to sacrifice John Barleycorn so that his seed might fall on the fertile land and grow the grain. Don't block the way. I don't care for that pagan pomp. There is just one God now, and he gives us everything we need, in this life and the next. <laughs> Goddess blood! Beard. You wouldn't fool a child with that howling. Unhand me, fiend! Guards! Guards! You're dead! Will none of you Saxons save me? I think. Aren't we? Oh, what a thrill! My heart is racing! That is still beats at all. Your screaming drew half the guards in Colchester down upon us. I wanted to give a good performance. My father always said I was quite the actor. I won't deny your enthusiasm. Did you not have even a little fun? To steal away a princess. It did give a thrill. A woman fights bravely against her abductors. Yet, what will they do with me now? Is my virtue safe with you? It's not in danger, if that's what you mean. Come now, Eivor. 
You can stand against Elfrid's brutes, but you shudder at a maiden's gentle teasing? It is done, and all that stands between me and my home now is a foaming ribbon of surf and silt. You did well, Rolo. You and your people. Are you ready to sail? Loki's hissing sun churns the waters between our coasts. We'll need time to rest as we wait for fairer weather. Have a care, then. Alfred's soldiers will be looking for Estrid, even if Beerstan's will not. Now's not the time for such worries, Afor. Tonight, we celebrate! Let's get you some mead! Birstan will meet you northeast of Colchester tomorrow. You have earned all my husband promised, and more. Come find me, if you like, away from these reveling Danes. I should find Beerston. No doubt he's hunting again. I stood sword to sword with your father, Rollo. Yes! <laughs> A ruse worthy of the trickster Loki. They're even stolen by us mere mortals. I am proud of us. We did a good thing for Estrid and her lord. Maybe now we can all be happy. Mm. Made me feel young again. And I have you to thank. You believed me, though I was a coward. Won't make that mistake again. What lies ahead, I wonder? A new life, or an old life renewed. My old life, Frankia. Mon Dieu, I feel as if I have been sleepwalking these past years, waiting for something to shake me awake. Are you awakened now? Yes. These past weeks have been stirring, breathtaking. Your passion and strength. Eivor, I've never met such a burning soul. You make too much of it. All I've done, I did for my clan and the glory it brought me. Why does your honesty make you more alluring still? Le cœur a ses raisons que la raison ne connaît point. Did you dream while you sleepwalked? I did. I dreamed that all my fleeting happiness was a prelude to something bigger. Glimpses of greater joy, greater love. Lie with me, Eivor, under the stars of England. Give me a last bittersweet moment before I leave her shores. I'll be with you tonight. But tomorrow your new life must begin. I hope you won't look back. Shh. Still your lips, and come here. 